warnings for the top of this video. First of all, a trigger warning that I will be talking about intentional self-harm behavior, such as cutting. Secondly, a comment warning that if you are planning to make vile comments about people who intentionally injure themselves or encourage people to injure themselves or cut themselves, your comments aren't welcome here. This is intended to be a safe space, and if you make this an unsafe space through your comments, you're gonna get banned. So let's all practice being decent humans, shall we? A couple weeks ago, Emmy A asked for help with a friend who's cutting. She asked in class for a pair of scissors to cut herself with a smile on her face, and I said, no, I don't want you to hurt yourself. Please don't cut yourself. I really love you. A few days ago, she said to me with the exact same smile, I'm going to cut myself. Yesterday, she even sent pictures of her arm bleeding to her good friends and some friends she doesn't even talk to. My question is, is she doing it for attention or because she needs help? What do I need to do? To just quickly answer MEA's question of, is she just looking for attention or does she actually need help? Yeah, she probably needs help because what's going on, regardless of the reasons for it or the ways that it manifests, whether it is cutting or excessive scratching or burning, etc., what is happening is, quote, a deliberate adaptive strategy to manage physiological stimulation and emotional distress without the intention of ending life. It's often used as a coping mechanism for extreme tension or stress, anxiety, depression. It might be used to deal with extremely traumatic events or abuse happening. It might be used to deal with bullying. It can be related to impulse control disorders. Speaking of control, it is often used to gain a sense of control over whatever is going on inside or outside. And there is a socially contagious element to this, particularly among younger people. And it does spread through social media. There are these online communities that have been created. It thrives on places like Tumblr, YouTube, and YouTube comments. Considering all of the outrageous things people can do or wear to draw attention to themselves, just writing people who might self-harm in public as just wanting attention, plain and simple, it's not that plain and simple. Demi Lovato, who has talked before about her past cutting behavior and how she overcame that said that she did it as a way to match the outside to how horrible she felt on the inside. When it comes to the work of recovery from this kind of behavior and almost rewiring our, our brains and our thought patterns to resist that impulse, to seek out that instant gratification, and I put gratification in quotes because it isn't ultimately gratifying. The challenge is focusing on the inside and working on renovating the inside rather than destroying the outside. MEA's question of attention seekers versus people who legitimately need help also gets at a really toxic pattern that I've noticed as well of there being this false hierarchy of severity, of quantifying the legitimacy of your emotional distress based on the severity of your self-inflicted wounds. If you're hurting yourself or attempting to hurt yourself or even just making it look like you've hurt yourself, and that's still unhealthy behavior that's being exhibited. Speaking as an adult, although I'm not a parent, I, I do think that parents and teachers and other authority figures in kids' lives can probably do a better job maybe stepping up in certain ways to where people don't feel compelled to have to prove just how much their problems, if anything, just feel like problems rather than having to physically manifest it. What do you do though if you know that say a friend or family member, someone you care about is hurting him or herself? Freaking out about it and telling them all of the ways that it is, what they're doing is terrible, it's probably not gonna do anything. Ultimatums, not gonna do anything. Guilt trips, not gonna do anything. In fact, that might actually make it worse. The very best thing that you can do for someone who is doing this to themselves is be as kind, gentle, and non-judgmental as possible. Saying, hey, I, I didn't know that you felt this way. Next time you wanna do this, you call me. By making yourself available and letting them know that you care, I'm sure that that does make a difference. Ultimately, it's up to that person to stop the behavior. But what you can do 
is open yourself up as a resource. It's distressing, yes, to see how many people do this and how this is such a way of life for so many girls in particular, but also how completely hateful people are in response to these girls in particular. And I know that guys do it too. It just all feeds into this vicious cycle that has only elevated this behavior to epidemic levels when we should be collectively working towards becoming healthier. To that end, I need your help. Have you helped a friend with this before? Or if you've been someone who has intentionally hurt yourself, what did you do to stop those kinds of behaviors? Let me know in the comments below. And seriously, I, I would appreciate everybody's insights on this and also people's kindness and non-judgmental approach to this. Let's make this a positive conversation because guess what? People legitimately need help whether they're open with this or in secret and you never know how one comment that you could make on the internet could radically change someone's life for the better or for the worse. So choose the better. Due to the sensitivity of this week's topic, I am gonna hold off on sharing comments from last week's Ask Kristen video, what's not to hate about Valentine's Day. But quickly, I wanna thank everybody for the very kind engagement. Congratulations, you all made my heart feel 10 times bigger. Oh no, it just looks like my heart broke. <laughs> Opposite.